Let's go out to Boone, North Carolina, and talk to Gabriel. What's up, Gabriel? Yes. Hey, how are you? <laughs> yes. Good. Great. Grand. Wonderful. How are you? Doing pretty well. Excellent. What's up? So, uh, um, it might get a little emotional. It's um, all good, man. I would like to know how the best way is to go about maintaining a relationship with my sister. Um, when she is currently in a romantic relationship with a 50 something year old man who I believe possibly groomed her. Um, she's just turned 18 in March. Oh, geez. Whoa. Yeah. So, um, we, this had been going on. I personally knew the man before she did. Um, and so she had met him and um, would see him on a weekly basis out at a so, like a social setting, a social function. And um, just over time, started having like this little crush on him. And then it started developing into more. Um, and there were measures put up to where they wouldn't have any more contact. And like the social setting was... Um, done away with so that way they wouldn't be seeing each other anymore um, and she had told everybody in the family that she wasn't seeing him anymore that there was no conversation anymore that there was no um, seeing him at all but things got kind of funny back in I want to say September and we thought that there's possibility that she was definitely seeing him and talking to him so I actually had a very upfront conversation with her about what this would look like for her life, what it would look like, um, like all the different possibilities. And I also was very clear about how it would change our relationship. Um, and then I called him and I asked him directly, you know, are you having any relations with her right now? Are you talking to her currently? She has plans to come and move in with you do you know anything about this? And he said, no, he knew nothing, that there was no contact. They weren't talking. But some of the things that he was saying led me to believe that they definitely were talking. Um, so yeah, some time passed and went on. Uh, my mother and stepfather ended up involving the police, but the police said that legal age was 16. So there was nothing that they could do God, either. Freaking North Carolina, dude. So, Unbelievable. Yeah, really. If you are so, a um, legislator in the state of North Carolina, you should be ashamed with with yourself. You shouldn't be able to sleep. Right. It's disgusting. Yeah. 50 years old with a 16-year-old. Yeah. So, um, God almighty. What the, what the hell is happening to our country, man? I don't know. God, it's so disgusting. It's disgusting. My God. I uh, urged her to... Um, hey, here, here's the thing. You're not... There is no conversation you can have with her. She is a child under the spell of an adult. That's why they need adults in their lives to protect them from predators like this man. There's not a conversation you haven't had with her that where she would go oh okay I get it now that's not going to happen she is living in an altered reality which is why a consent age of 16 is so insane golly man so I'll tell you this I'm proud of you for calling him direct. I'm proud for your mother and stepfather calling the police. As you were talking, I kept saying, hey, there's going to be phone records. There's going to be all the photos she sent him that he requested from her. There's going to be all that crap's going to be out there and discoverable because it's electronic. But I forgot you're in North Carolina. So disgusting. Whew. Here's. That feels super helpless. Yeah. I, I wish I had another, I wish I had, I wish I had something else I could tell you. I feel helpless for you. 
So I'm going to tell you something that nobody else is going to tell you. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that is, it's the great Evander Holyfield versus Mike Tyson move. Okay. Mm-hmm. Here's what the move was. Everybody was terrified of Mike Tyson. He would beat people before they even got in the ring. And he had an uppercut that came from the floor and would knock your head to the moon. And he had a very particular way he moved his right foot when he was engaging in this uppercut. And what happened was everybody, when they felt his body shifting, they would back up a few inches, which gave them, gave him the exact space he needed to land that crushing blow. And then he fought Evander Holyfield, who talks about how he trained for months. That every time his body, Mike Tyson's body, went to to make that maneuver, he stepped in and got really close. Which made that punch impossible to land. And over time, he wore Mike Tyson out and defeated the undefeatable. And so here's what I want to tell you. Every time you get an arm's length from her... That's when you're going to get hurt. And that's when she's going to get hurt. So I'm going to tell you to do something crazy. I want you to lean in and get real close. Would she go to a weekly breakfast with you or a weekly lunch with just you two just to talk about sister stuff? Um, I mean, it might be a possibility to do it over the phone, but we're currently living um, about five hours apart. Okay. I'd set that up. I'd set up a weekly letter with her so that she gets something in the mail from you every week. And here's what we're doing. We are never going to let her completely detach from reality. One day she's going to open her eyes and go, oh God, what have I done? And we want to give her a trail of breadcrumbs back to you. And that she will immediately turn scared and look to her left and you will have been standing there the whole time. And most advice, what you're going to get is we'll just cut her off. Forget about her. She'll come crawling back. And I think that that's, that kind of wisdom has given us the, the, the world that we inhabit now. I think it's wrong. And so I would love for you to say, Hey, you're my sister. I want to, we're going to talk every week. And put a time on the calendar that you don't ever miss. And you might get off the phone, Gabrielle, and and just cry. Yeah. But keep showing up for her. And keep showing up for her. And there may be moments when you have to put boundaries in, like, hey, I want you to come visit. And you can say, hey, you know, I I really don't like, I I really, I don't want to be around him. I'd love to hang out with you. I'd love it, love it, love it. But you know how I feel about him, so I'm asking you to respect my boundaries. And she's 18, so she'll probably say something like, well, if you don't love him, then you don't love me. And you could say, you know, that's dumb. You know, it's not true. Yeah. Right? So there will be those moments, and you know those will come. Can I ask you a hard, quick question? Yeah, of course. Was there anything in your y'all's ecosystem growing up that, It's just not super common. What was yeah, the well, what was the, the the breadcrumb trail that led her to this guy? Um, she really wanted out of a house that my parents had divorced, and she was the only sister, like the only girl left at home, um, with three brothers. And um, was there abuse? My, my mom and stepdad don't have the best relationship. There's constant fighting, constant. The house is constantly loud and doesn't feel very stable. And that's just what you've heard. You don't even know exactly, right? Right. So she and did- I mean, there were ample opportunities. Like we, my husband and I made it very clear that she could come and live with us. She had... um another sister who offered the same thing that she could come and move in. And 
I think it's just she waited too long and then this looked like a really good option and it's super hard now to have like to continue a relationship because I've got a five month old daughter and under no circumstances do I want him around her. It's really hard to see like if he was pedophile who groomed her or if he was an older man and it was like it sounds so crazy but like right time right circumstances even though it's so wrong does that even make sense yeah i was i'm always going to put that lay that burden um in the hands of the 50 year old yeah all right yeah and so i'm i, I mean if you're dancing on that line it, it's just you you got issues as is but the man's disgusting right. And there's just not a way around it. And the police have said, dude, there's nothing we can do. And so yeah. I think any any effort you spend trying to dig into that at this point, after the police have been involved and they've wiped their hands clean, I, I don't know there's a lot more to do. Yeah. Maybe you could dig around and see if you could find out they were contacting each other when she was only 15 instead of 16. But I mean, maybe, but Right now, he's playing the letter of the law. Right. I think, and they I, did that very well. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think the, um, I think the energy best spent is creating a new relationship with her, that is distant enough from this guy, that she never loses touch with the fact that her family loves her, and there may have been so much chaos growing up that she just can't see the forest from the trees, she can't feel it or see it. Okay. But you can break through that and, 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 and invite her back into your life. Not him, but her. Right. And this doesn't mean you right. give her money. And this doesn't mean you fill in the blank, pay her rent. This doesn't mean all that kind of stuff. Right. But it means I'm a, I'm, we're talking every week. And if she wants to come down and see her niece, oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. He can't come. He's not welcome. So maybe yeah. the conversation with you and your husband is setting up boundaries for um, what is this relationship going to look like with her? And again, don't chase it to where you get so close, you fall over the edge too. But I want you to think of ways you can lean in and get closer to your sister. Not in a manipulative way, but just in a way that when she turns her head and opens her eyes and goes, oh no, everything that I'm involved in right now is wrong. And I thought this was the only ticket out of a house of chaos and abuse. And I was wrong. And you're right there. And you have been the whole way. And for everybody listening out there, if you've got somebody in your life who you love and you care about and making dumb decisions, find ways you can re-engage the relationship. Not, not, in, not, um, don't give a drunk a drink or all that kind of, you know, all that stuff. But find a way you can reconnect. Healing. Changing behavior, changing life always comes through reconnection. Always. <laughs>